Hey guys, it's John Rubin with Custom Rods, and today um, I wanted to do a video on the U40 Duragloss or the LL Supreme, excuse me, LS Supreme uh, high polymer rod wrapping finish, um, light stable um, by U40. Um, it's a pretty great product, you know. Uh, I have to admit, um, I was pretty much a flex coat person. Um, I swore by flex coat, um, but I've been using this for a while. Um, and, um, I really like this U40 product. I know a lot of you guys are already using this product. So I would love to hear any comments you guys want to put down in the comments block. Um, but for those of you that have never used the U40, um, and you're still using flex coat, um, or, uh, um, rod builders, uh, CRB, uh, um, you know, two part finish, that's fine. And, and they are both great products. Um, but I like the way this product just works in general, meaning, um, how it works once you've mixed it, um, some of the steps you have to employ while you're using it. Um, and really, uh, it kind of gives you, um, really, if you're shooting for like a one coat finish on some lighter rods, um, you're definitely going to get that with this and on some heavier rods, probably a two to three coat, just depending, um, on how much finish you're putting on when you, when you lay your coats down and then the type that you're, uh, looking for. So with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and start to, um, get going on applying this finish. So the first thing I want to do, um, again, it's a two part hardener and a resin white cap, black cap also comes with two syringes with caps and a label hardener, um, and or resin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to use, um, the resin and we're going to go ahead and, and add enough resin on here for this product. So I'm just take, using the syringe and I'm, I'm doing a pretty, pretty decent span on this blank. I'm going to go to about there. And then wipe off my syringe because I got plenty of finish on the inside side of the bottle as I was laying it down to show that to you guys. So we're just gonna go ahead and clean off these syringes and then put the caps back on. And then grab another shop towel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my hardener. Get the same equal amount. I'm going two milliliters, same as we did with the resin. All right, add the hardener in there. I'll let that set for a second while I clean off my syringe. Get a cap back on it. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stir this for three minutes. Three minutes real slow. Just play my stir stick inside the shot glass and I can just rotate this, the uh, shot glass. And or I can slowly move the stick around and mixing it up. Of course, if you have uh, one of the, you know, the electronic mixers, you can use that as well. But I like to just mix this pretty slow. Again, I'm mixing this for three minutes. So we'll be right back. Okay, guys. So now um, what I've done is I've mixed that for three minutes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that set there for three more minutes and just let it do its thing. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna look at it. I'm just gonna let it sit for three more minutes by itself. Um, and we'll be right back. Okay guys, so I mixed this for three minutes and now I just let it set all by itself for another three minutes. Um, and what few bubbles were in there really kind of gone. There's some small little bubbles in there, but those will dissipate here once uh, we get kind of into the next couple of steps. But before I move forward, um, I wanted to uh, talk about a couple things here um, that I think um, is really kind of important. And so 
the first thing is you need to know is once you've mixed this, you've got about 45 to 60 minutes work time, which I think is a lot better than some of the other products that are out there. Um, so again, a 45 to 60 minute work time. So you can take your time, no need to rush. Uh, I can take my time, you know, uh, you know, filming this video and talk about, um, you know, that some, some certain aspects about this without, you know, concern, without the concern of this starting to gel up or whatnot. So 45 to 60 minute work time. Um, the next thing that you need to understand is um, once you apply it, of course, you can apply um, as the as the rod is rotating, but you also want to go lengthwise um, to help get a smooth level finish. And then, of course, have it on a rotator, a rotating dryer that will help ensure that the self leveling product will level nice and easy for you, not have a nice clean look to it. Um, it will gel in about four um, to five hours, and it'll be tack free in six hours. So you can come back in six hours and flick it. Um, it'll sound hard, you know, it'll, there won't be no tack on it, you won't leave a fingerprint on it. Um, and it will be cured hard and ready to use in about 24 hours. Um, so essentially, you know, after wrapping and finishing the rod, 24 hours after you've applied the finish, um, you can take the rod out and use it. That being said, it does take, I say again, it does take um, five, another five full days. On top of the 24 hours, it takes another five full days um, for the full cure to happen on the product. So it's not saying that you can't go fishing with it. It's saying, hey, it's cured hard and you can use it, um, but it's going to take an additional five days from after that initial 24 hours of drying for it to go into a full cure um, status. The next thing is, is if you're going to apply, um, in most cases, you can get away with second coats. Um, you know, second coat, two coats should be sufficient. Some cases, depending on what type of build you're making, you may need um, another, uh, another coat or maybe two coats. Uh, it just depends um, how many coats that you think you need to put on there. That being said, um, you need, all right, the minimum or maximum time in between coats is 48 hours. So once you lay a coat down, you want to make sure you're laying your second coat within 48 hours to make sure that the two coats bond together properly. So let's go ahead um, and start laying down um, this finish. So the next thing I like to do um, is I like to take a piece of foil and pour my finish out onto that piece of foil. You could use any type of flat surface. Um, I prefer the foil. Uh, the way I look at it, aluminum foil is just like those foil cups or dishes you can buy, um, you know, or, or the, the stainless steel dishes you can use um, to pour your finish in there because it helps reduce um, the, the bubbles that are in there. So that's why I like to use foil. So I'll put my finish on the foil and then I'll just let it set for a second while I prepare to do a couple other things. So now what I want to do, we'll set that aside. Now what I want to do is add the fishing rod. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, starting, and start adding the finish um, to this rod and I'm just going to hand turn this, but and then what I'll do is I'll get it put over on the dryer. So I'll start adding this finish on here. And it's, I mean, it's, it's really nice. It goes on really smooth. Um, you know, this stuff works really well. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like flex coat, you know, light build or something like that, but I just like this product. Uh, I've had a lot of good success with it since I've started using it recently. Uh, and again, uh, that is why uh, we are making this video. I wanted to share uh, kind of what I learned about this stuff with you guys. Again, to help, help you make an informed decision. Uh, and then lastly, um, you know, I, I know, again, some of you guys are already using this. You know, I, I've seen, we've had conversations in the uh, you know, in the comments blocks on some previous videos. So I know some of you guys have been using this product already. So please, whether you use it in the past or you haven't used it in the past, um, feel free to go down and, and make a comment down in the comments block and let me know what you guys, um, what you guys think. So 
The other thing is with this product, uh, because you guys won't see me do this when I put it on the dryer, um, you really don't have to mess around with the bubbles. Just, you know, um, spread your, uh, your finish lengthwise on the build. And, um, you know, you can add it like I am in a circular motion and then come back and then spread it out. Um, you really don't have to mess around with the bubbles. Um, there are a few bubbles in there. You know, the instructions will tell you, don't worry about it. Let them go. Um, the bubbles will, will come out on their own. Um, you can, you know, if, if you if you don't want to take a chance and having the bubbles in there, you can use your brush or your mixing tool or whatever you have. And you can kind of poke those bubbles to help get them to pop, um, you know, if you like. And then you can also um, use heat if you're using isopropyl alcohol torch. Um, if you're using um, the torch, denatured alcohol is what I meant to say, I apologize. So if you're using denatured alcohol um, in your alcohol torch, you can use that. Um, don't use a lighter, all right? You can come up here and you can get close to uh, the finish and help take out those bubbles, but don't get too close um, to the finish where you actually end up messing it up. Um, and then the other thing you need to keep in mind is this product does not react well to heat. What that means is if you put too much heat on this finish, you'll just create more bubbles. Um, so just keep that in mind if you decide to use this product. So I'm just going through here, spinning this around. All right, so let me know what you guys think so far down in the comments block, what you're thinking so far. Again, this product, I haven't been using this product a long time, but I've been using it for a little while now. Um, and uh, to be honest, the reason why I bought it um, is I was getting a bunch of um, orders of flex code in that I was having problems with. Um, with the hardener actually hardening um, and turning into a clump inside the bottle. Now there's ways to get past that. You know, you can set it inside a, a thing of water and all that and let it warm up. Um, but I, you know, I was just getting frustrated. So I wanted to, uh, actually what I did is I bought a bunch of different kinds of finish um, and I started experimenting to see which ones I liked. Um, and there were some that I didn't buy because I used them in the past a long time ago. Um, but some of the newer ones, kind of like you guys saw the, uh, the Threadmaster one, that was part of a result of that flex coat stuff. I, I was like, hey, you know what? Let, let's give it a shot. Let's, let's buy it. Let's see what it's like. And let's tell everybody what it's like. So if you haven't seen, uh, if, you not have, if you have not seen, excuse me, the video on the flex coat one part or excuse me the thread master one part finish you can see that link up here in the upper right hand corner so i'm just adding this finish here i'm just trying to make sure i got it even Trying to make sure I just have an even application here. All right. Get down to the end here, guys. So I'm just Spreading it out. Again, I'm not in a rush because I have 45 to 60 minute working time with this product. I'm not worried about it gelling up, getting stiff, trying to throw heat on it to loosen it up again. I've had plenty of other finishes where I've had to do that and it's okay. Um, but when you don't have to do that, that's, that's kind of nice.
We're getting down here to the end. And I'm just making sure I'm tying this in good with this other spot that I had here. And I'm just going to come back, pick up some of this finish I have. And I'm just spreading that out, going lengthwise. And I'm just kind of coming back down here where I started at. All right. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to get this on the dryer and then we will come back uh, and take a look at this once this coat um, has dried up and set. Okay, so we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. So um, the first coat has dried up. It's been 24 hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead um, and prepare to do the second coat. Um, so one thing that I want to point out here is so, you know, we have the dragon scale wrap here. Um, and so what I like about this um, is that even with just a thin coat of finish on the dragon scale, it's still enough finish to fill in. I mean, I, I can get a little bit of thread bump when I rub my finger over it, but for the most part, it's still, it was still enough finish to fill in um, the, uh, the patterns from the dragon scale wrap. Sometimes with some other brands of finish, um, it just doesn't fill in um, as good or all the way um, like it has done here. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to come in here. I've got a, a few bubbles that uh, just because that thread held on to the bubbles a little bit. So I'm just going in. I'm looking for anything that might be, um, you know, a bubble that didn't pop all the way. Um, and then I'm just coming in here, taking a look at those. Find anything, any thread pieces that are sticking up. And then I'm just kind of coming in with my... Uh, with my razor blade and I'm just knocking those back and then uh, in preparation for this second coat. And looking pretty good, I think. So I've gone through with the razor blade. I've knocked back uh, everything that looks like it might be you know, a little bump or something like that from um, a bubble or something. So I've knocked all that back. Um, so let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and apply the second coat of finish here. Uh, and then we'll come back and I'll let you guys see what two coats of finish um, with this U40 product looks like, uh, even on top of a dragon scale wrap. Okay, guys, we'll be right back. So you can see after the second coat of finish, um, this is what it looks like, again, on the Dragon Scale, super smooth. Um, I could probably call it quits on a second, um, second layer, if you will, or second coat of finish. Um, but what I do want to do is I'm going to add another coat for a couple of reasons. Um, one just here where the guide feet are at. Um, there's just a little bit of kind, I don't want to say like, the thread piece is poking through, but you can see right here where I'm just going to come over. It still just needs another coat of finish. And you can see here um, that I've gone ahead and added my decals. And again, there just a little bit of edge from a piece of thread there, but I've added my decals. Um, they're good to go. Nice, smooth surface. Um, I like to leave a little bit of time in between the decals when, um, when I add them. Um, but now they're on there. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is add a third and final coat of finish, and then this one will be a wrap. So um, again, I hope that this video um, has really shed some light um, on the product, uh, the uh, U40 Duragloss LS Supreme um, finish, as you see here. I think it's a great product. 
Um, I think it's going to be kind of my go-to, uh, you know, and totally found it by accident, but I do like how it works. Um, and I'm also somebody that uses more than one coat of finish. Although if you're doing a very, a light build with not a lot of thread work, one coat with that, a good, you know, a good coat with that would probably suffice. Um, but I do like, um, multiple coats of finish. Uh, you know, the caveat here, um, uh, is that you have to apply all of the coats of finish within roughly 48 hours of each other. Um, and although this is dry to the touch in 24 hours, um, and it's hard and you can use it, you do have to wait a five full days, um, uh, after that to get a good full cure, um, on the product. So again, um, hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Um, and make sure you guys watch this next video here until next time, guys, take care.